In this video, I'm answering some of the questions that you might have when it comes to Photo P's mock-up. Please join me. After creating your 2D logo on Canva, you're going to go on share and download it as a JPEG or a PNG. So we're going to click on download and download it as a PNG. And then you're going to access www.remove.bg so that you can take away the white and the background and then you have a transparent background. So you're going to load your image, it will remove the background and then you click on download and you will then go to photo p once you land on photo p my suggestion is always use a browser with photo p because i've tried the app so far the app doesn't function the way that it's supposed to be i'm sure they're working on it but for now try using the browser until the app works exactly like it should be once you land here you're gonna select template if you're using your own mockup that you've downloaded from unblast.com or freepeak.com, then you will be using an open from computer. For now, we're going to stick with templates. And when you get to templates, you can choose whichever logo mockup that you want. I usually click on mockups to find the hot mockups. You could click on new mockups, you could click on top mockups as well to pick the mockup that works for you. So we're going to be doing a couple of lessons and learning what it is that you could be doing and whatnot in order for you to have the perfect logo that you want so the first thing that i want to show you is if you land on here and you pick a mock-up so say for example we want to use my favorite mock-up this would be the logo mock-up on office so it's the same principle on all of these mock-ups and once you've opened it up you're going to click on the link which says photop.com and it opens up the mockup itself and then the mockup is loaded so i'm going to show you first of all the way that you could manipulate and open up your mockup you always look for this sign or the notice that says your logo here or your design here or edit design here it will guide you on your right hand side it's going to ask you on the layers section this is a layers section so you are then looking for those words that says your design here or your logo here and what you do you go to the checkered box and you put your mouse over on the checkered box and not on the square and then you would double click on the so that it opens up the mock-up behind the scenes so this is where the designer has given us an example of how we should be placing our 2d logo so this example, we just click and we hide it. The eye represents you seeing it or not seeing it. So we don't want to see the example that the designer has showed us. So we're going to click on the eye to hide it. And now we're going to place our 2D logo. So the first way that I want to show you is you're going to go file and you're going to say open and place. And then you're going to go to your downloads and you're going to go find the downloaded um, logo design. So it is this one, you click on it and you say open and then it gets loaded to the mockup. So that's one way. I'm going to delete that. The other way is just click and drag and you just place it on the canvas and then it's there. So I'm showing you the two ways because sometimes other people's computers, it won't show their downloads at the bottom of the screen. Next, you're going to size it by moving your mouse to the corner of your 2D design and then you drag. You see, this is how you make it bigger and you make it smaller. As the mock-up designer showed us before we switched off the eye, you then size it and make it nice and big. Like you've seen with the designer, they showed us that we need to try and use the space as much as possible because then the mock-up is going to follow what you are adding so try to fit it as nice and big as possible once you've fitted it then you're going to either go file save as a smart object or use command s or control s from your keyboard and then you wait a bit and then it changes to smart object and once it's saved you're going to click on logo mockup the first tab it takes you back to the first page that we started the whole journey. Then we have our converted 3D logo looking smart and gorgeous. When you get to the stage, there are a couple of things that you could do. You could go to your layers section 
and the designer has showed us the ways that we could manipulate his design and switch it off and switch it on etc so he's added different layers the first layer was for us to convert the second layer is the lighting that he's used to create his mock-up so if you don't want the lighting you can click the eye to switch off the lighting and then it switches off if you want the lighting back you can switch it back on and if you want to click on the drop down arrow that's also fine because his lighting has different levels that he's created for us over there so you could switch off certain sections of the lighting by clicking on the eye and then it switches off the background or the rectangle five that the designer has created if you want it back you just switch it back using the eye so if you want to close the drop off drop down arrow you click on there and then it closes off it's the same principle with the effects and if you want to switch it off you switch it on that's how you manipulate the layers that the designer has created for us same principle with the shadows so with the design that we've created there's shadows behind so if you don't want certain shadows on this design you can switch them off as you clearly see when i'm switching off using the eye it takes off the shadows that are there the last thing that i want to talk about is the background so he has added three layers of a background on here there's a black rectangle there's a rectangle that's uh, number six and then there's the picture that you see with a chair behind so if you don't want any of these you can just click on the eye and then it takes away all of the background that's on there if we go back to shadows they will be much more visible when there's no background to show you how the mock-up was actually created so let me just go back to the background if you want the background back you just click on the eye so if you just want a certain portion exactly the same principle you switch off the black rectangle and then it's gone and then the the picture you can also switch off the picture like that it takes away the chairs and you're left with just a nice blackness without the chairs if you want to change the chairs and you want to add your own picture you just double click on the picture itself and it will open up the background of the pictures that was added by the designer so what you do the, here i created a video that i'm going to link in the description below teaching you step by step but i'm going to quickly show you on on this tutorial you could also switch these off and add your own picture so what i usually do i go to canva i get a picture of a design so we are doing birds now so i'll go find sky or something and then add that on so let's quickly do that so what i would then do is i would click and drag the image that i've downloaded from canva to my design once it loads as a landscape i go to my edit so i go edit and i go and i look for a transform control so i'm looking to transform this image and i want to warp this image so it will help me warp the image and place it to the corners exactly like the image that the designer has made on here once that's done i click on my correct mark or to accept the changes and i press command s to change it to smart object and then it gets updated as a smart object and then you could always switch these off and then you're left with your one that you want once you've changed it to smart object and you go back to your main picture or your main image it would pick up the sky as you see that it has picked up the sky that we've created now so i should have just warped it all the way and closed that little gap that looks ugly over there but i just wanted to show you the principle of how you change the background 
say for example you don't want even the blue picture you don't want everything then you're going to switch off the background so that you only have your own 3d image with the background it depends on whatever you want then you will download it looking like this so you're gonna go file and export it as a png svg whatever format that you want let's go for a jpeg and i always usually change my width and make it smaller because photo p makes it pixelate sometimes so then when i do that and i click on save the background looks white but it is a transparent background so it depends on what it is that you want to use with your image so let me open it up so you can see it how it looks like on my computer it looks like it has a white background but that white background is a transparent background so I, I don't know what it is that you would want to want i don't know what it is that you would want with a clear background but it's up to you on what it is that you want so my suggestion is add whatever picture or image you want at the background before you download otherwise you're going to get an image that looks it looks like it's white but it's a transparent background and then you can take it to wherever you want to use it i don't know maybe a website or a social media i don't know you can let me know in the comments below what you would be wanting to use this for but that is just how you would manipulate the layers section of your photo p 3d image when you are creating your logo hope that answers your questions if you have any more load them up on the comments below and then we'll try to answer your questions and help you along with your design journey thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial thoroughly enjoy these i will see you on the next video